Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are going to be comparing inline four-cylinder engines with boxer four-cylinder engines and talking about the individual advantages and disadvantages of each engine layout. We have a 3D printed EJ20 Subaru boxer engine as well as a 22RE Toyota inline four-cylinder engine. We'll start fairly basic and work our way through several different topics for each layout, including the four strokes, the firing interval and order, the vibrations of each layout, the packaging differences, the cylinder head differences, and finally a bit about the sound of each engine. Looking at either layout, they're both based on the same four strokes, intake, compression, power, and exhaust. Both engines fire one cylinder for every 180 degrees of crankshaft rotation, but they have slightly different firing orders. On each engine, we can see cylinders 1, 2, 3, and 4. For the boxer engine, the firing interval is 1, 3, 2, 4, while on the straight 4, it's 1, 3, 4, 2. So the order of the last two cylinders firing is switched. Now these layouts, matched with the firing interval, make for some interesting differences as far as how the engines are balanced. On the boxer engine, you'll notice the pair of pistons move in and out together. This means that the primary forces when the pistons reach the top of the cylinder, as well as when they reach the bottom of the cylinder, are cancelled out. On the inline four-cylinder engine, it's the same story. The primary forces cancel out as the pairs of pistons reach the top and bottom at the same time. When we get into secondary forces, however, the engines begin to differ. Secondary forces are created due to the piston traveling faster at the top half of the cylinder than at the bottom half something I'll include a link to in the video description that breaks it down in great detail. What you need to know though, is that when the piston reaches the very top of the cylinder, or the very bottom, the secondary forces point up or out from the piston. Now with the boxer engine, since the pistons point opposite each other, these forces are balanced out, resulting in a very smooth running engine. For the inline four, all of the forces point in the same direction, and thus do not cancel each other out, causing the engine to vibrate unless balancing shafts are used. The boxer engine isn't perfect, however. Because the pistons do not perfectly align with each other, it creates a rocking moment which makes the engine want to rotate back and forth along the vertical axis. What's fascinating though is that if you add two cylinders to either of these designs, whether it's a boxer 6 or an inline 6, you can perfectly eliminate all first and second order forces and moments. You might think the Boxer 6 would have a rocking motion from the cylinder banks of 3, but each bank of 3 cancels out the rocking motion of the other, unlike in a V6 configuration. Looking at the two engines, both of these 3D printed engines are at 35% scale, so you can actually compare them size-wise to one another. Because of the inherent vibrations of inline 4-cylinder engines, you won't tend to see engine sizes much larger than about 3 liters, though historically they have existed at much larger sizes. One of the largest gasoline four-cylinders currently made is in fact a Toyota engine, a 2.7 inline four used in the Toyota Tacoma. Only Porsche and Subaru currently use flat engines in their vehicles, so the size doesn't tend to be any larger than typical inline four-cylinders, even though it does have better vibration characteristics. The other biggest advantage of the boxer engine is the low profile, which keeps the center of gravity low and thus reduces the amount of load transfer you have in the car during braking, cornering, or accelerating, which improves grip. With a lower center of gravity, you can also reduce body roll and choose to use softer springs. Additionally, in the event of a collision, it's easier to position the engine so that it goes underneath the passenger compartment rather than into the passenger compartment for improved safety. Now, that's not to say that the inline Ford doesn't have its own size advantages. Generally, it's a bit more compact with only one cylinder head and it's not quite as wide as the boxer engine. This leaves more room for suspension geometry and can also allow for a better steering angle since the tires won't have as much of an interference at full lock. Moving on to the valve train, although this particular inline four has a single overhead cam, you'll much more commonly see dual overhead like the boxer engine on modern vehicles. The big advantage with the inline four is that there's only one cylinder head, meaning only one intake and one exhaust camshaft, less moving parts, and some weight saved. It's also far, far easier to access the cylinder head for service. Whether it's adjusting the valves or replacing spark plugs, the i4 design makes it a much easier task. Finally, we get to the topic of sound, and here's where most people will agree the boxer rumble is a better sound, but it's not really a true advantage. The boxer rumble is a result of unequal length headers, and because Subaru is moving away from this exhaust design, 
new ones will generally sound pretty similar to other four-cylinder engines. It would in fact be possible to design an inline four-cylinder engine with different length exhaust pipes to create a unique rumble generally associated with Subarus, but it's not ideal for exhaust scavenging to have unequal pulses. It's not the smartest way to route an exhaust for a four-cylinder engine, however packaging does make the unequal header length seem appealing when paired with a boxer engine. And a big thank you to Eric Harrell for providing the 3D printed models. You can find links in the video description. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.